Hi, I am Peter Simons and I would like to introduce you to the wonders of live streaming. Um, personally, I live stream um, two times a week regularly. I've picked up that habit about uh, two years ago and my motivation um, why I, I did that was because I was curious about the technology. I, um, I had watched live streams from other people and loved it and thought this is cool and I wanted to know can I do that uh, entirely under Linux? I mean you can obviously do it under Windows. I think most uh, most live streamers do use Windows to, to manage their streams but that's not an option obviously so I wanted to figure out whether I can live stream stuff um, from my, my Linux desktop. And this has been mostly um, a technical challenge, right? I saw it, I was curious about the technology. And um, when I started doing live streams, I realized, man, this is fun. I, I enjoy it. And I think that this is probably the best motivation for, for someone to pick up live streaming because you enjoy it, right? And I would recommend that um, everybody who, who does this, uh, to everybody who does this, that you don't look at how many followers do I have, how many views do I have, um, is there advertising revenue, do people donate money, uh, this, this kind of stuff is, uh, who cares, right? Just do it because you like it. And if you, you do it because you like it, then chances are that people who watch it will notice and they like it too. Right, so um, that's I think a much better motivation than trying to become the new Twitch rock star or something like this. So um, while I was live streaming things uh, I work on, it's mostly uh, I, I mostly package like Haskell software, Haskell development environment, the compiler and stuff like that. And um, so what I, I noticed is that. Um, I not only enjoy it, but live streaming, the, the packaging work I do is actually very beneficial in many ways, because first of all, um, it's way more enjoyable to do it with uh, other people around than to do it by yourself alone. And the uh, second thing is that um, whenever I run into some kind of roadblock, when I have a, a bug that I don't know how to fix, maybe the Haskell compiler crashes building some package and I don't know what to do, then chances are that uh, someone who's watching the stream actually knows how to fix this and can point me to, yeah, this is a known bug in, in GHC and look at this GitHub ticket, there is a workaround or I don't know, right? So um, obviously if you collaborate, right, then this greatly increases your chances of, of figuring out stuff that you wouldn't be able to do by yourself. Um, so also, um, the people who enjoy the, the same things that, that I enjoy, right? Who like the Haskell language, who are interested in, in packaging or whatever, right? Um, they tend to watch the stream regularly. And so now I have, uh, it's a small crowd, no doubt, right? I have maybe like 10 to 15 viewers in my, my streams, if I'm lucky. Um, but this is a many, some of those people are there every week. And um, so it really feels like we kind of got to know each other. Not only I know them a bit, they know me a bit, but uh, we interact with each other. And it's a really, uh, it's gotten a small community, which is, is I think, pretty cool. Um, another benefit is that it makes uh, the things I do transparent. Sometimes I have to make decisions about. Um, which package which package do I update? Which update do I not take in yet? There are maybe build options that I can enable or disable. And when people uh, ask me questions about, well, why is it packaged like this? And why didn't you do it some other way? And then I can actually point them to the recording of the live stream in which I made that choice. And I explained my my thoughts and my reasoning and maybe I even discussed it with other people in the community and so this like documents um, the whole effort and makes it accessible to other people. Okay, so if you want to be a live streamer, <laughs> what do you what do you need to do it? So um, obviously you need 
you need an, an idea about what you want to do on the stream. Um, you can do pretty much anything. You can play games, browse the web, um, uh, get excited about new software, whatever. Do whatever you want. So <laughs> there is a, then you need an, uh, an account on Twitch. You need uh, or on YouTube or any other um, live streaming hosting site. Uh, I am pretty sure there is also uh, a live streaming site that's entirely run with open source software. And I think it's even nonprofit and everything. But I, I have to say, I don't recall the name right now. Uh, anyhow, so get an account so that you can allow to live that you allow to live stream. Then you need um, a computer, obviously, that can run the open broadcaster software under Linux. Um, open broadcaster software is, uh, uh, unfortunately, it's abbreviated um, OBS, which is confusing sometimes for, for Zuse people. But um, I call it OBS Studio most of the times to, to disambiguate that. So beyond the computer, you will need a microphone and a camera. And the camera is actually kind of optional because uh, just to give you an example, we could, I could do this entire live stream like this, right? Uh, this, this, this entire presentation, I could do it like this. And it's not as nice, right? Because um, obviously it's, it's nicer if you can, if you can see me, but um, it wouldn't, it would still be useful, right? So. If you don't have a camera, then that's okay. Uh, even though, man, get one because the, the viewers like seeing you, right? That's the point. Okay, so there is obviously a lot more hardware that's, that's nice to have, but um, I'll come back to that later. Let's uh, look at the open broadcaster software first. So OBS um, is unfortunately not packaged in Tumbleweed. I'm not sure why it might be some license issue for all I know. I have, I have no clue. So, but you can get it, ah, I already had it open. You can find it here on, on the software overview. You can, I don't know, look at Tumbleweed and then you'll see, aha, the latest version is here. And um, there you can, from there you can install it. Um, you can also build it relatively easy from source code if you're into that kind of thing. It's not, not hard. Um, ah, I was going to talk about that later. So um, let's, let's look at the software first. Let's check out how it's actually configured. Okay, the central component in this whole live streaming business is um, OBS Studio, the open broadcaster software, I think it's called. And um, I'm going to run it for the first time. And then it starts up saying, um, would you like to run the auto configuration wizard? And I think this is a good idea. Let's just do it. We optimize for streaming. Huh. It seems like it got, it misdetected the, the size of our monitor. Unfortunately, this, I don't know, uh, the earlier, earlier versions did not do this, but now the latest version has the habit of not recognizing my 4K monitor, but uh, it doesn't really matter. All right. I wish I could. No. Ah, maybe it's thrown off because I um, I greatly increased uh, the DPI value so that you have nice, nice large fonts here in the recording. Anyhow, let's just do it. So now we can choose which service to, to stream to. Um, I'll go with Twitch here. Um, my Twitch key is here in settings, stream settings. It's the first thing. And fortunately, it's <laughs> not displayed in plain text. And here we go. 
So this auto detection wizard, what it tries to figure out is basically what kind of internet bandwidth you have and um, how quickly you can encode the video stream. And both of these factors determine basically what is the resolution that you'll be streaming in and what is the um, frames per second that you'll be streaming and um, yeah, how much how much traffic can can you uh, send out to the world. And it's going to come up with some reasonable default values, which you can totally ignore and change and, and, and configure manually after the fact. But I think it's, uh, it's a good idea to have it run. So here you can see it's trying full HD in 30 frames per second. Now it's switching to a lower resolution. Okay, so we have, uh, it's not perfectly readable because my fonts are like completely out of whack, but it's okay. You see, we have full HD resolution for the stream and we have 60 frames per second. So these are great defaults. So the scene transition stock is actually, I don't want that here. Now, this is what OBS looks like. At this point, it's basically completely configured. You have your stream key, you have your, your the, the settings for your stream, and now all you have to do is here hit start streaming, and then you will be broadcasting essentially uh, um, black and your voice to the world, right? As you can see, the microphone is recognized. We have uh, it's calibrated by, by random chances, calibrated nicely. You see it's getting here. The, the voice is supposed to, when you talk normally, it's supposed to like enter this yellow range. And the loudest things you say are not really supposed to go far into the red range. Because the one thing you don't want is clipping, right? That's uh, everybody can turn up the volume or get a headset or whatever, right? There are plenty of ways to fix um, a screencast that's uh, not loud enough, but if you clip, then there is no way to fix that. Okay, so it's organized like this. You have scenes, and let's just call this scene main view. Um, and the scenes can contain any number of, of sources. Um, in this case, um, I have to right. Let's make this window a bit more. In this case, I would like. Okay, uh, this is a. Um, there is a. Ah, I can talk about this right now. So this is the configuration. And if you have an NVIDIA card, then you'll see that you can choose between a software encoder and a hardware encoder. If you don't have an NVIDIA card, then you have to go to the advanced settings, which is the, the case for me, right? Um, and here I'm basically be choosing to encode the stream with um, FFmpeg using the VA API. So this will be doing um, hardware, encode, hardware encoding. It's going to use the graphics card, but there is no native support for that in, um, in OBS, unfortunately. So these settings, let me check, will be streaming, will be streaming at 30 frames per second uh, and full HD. Basically, 60 frames per second makes no sense unless you're streaming like action-oriented gameplay. But for screencasts or work or any kind of normal stuff, um, 60 frames per second is completely unnecessary. Um, you cannot stream with a higher resolution to Twitch. Twitch does not allow anything above this, right? So this is like uh, really good and um, there is basically no, no reason to go above this. So they recommend that you have 4,500 kilobits per second. And I think they say B frames, uh, keyframe interval every two seconds. Very good. 
and everything else is fine. This is the stream. Here we use auto. And now it's configured nicely. The video, I'm gonna, for some reason, Twitch does not detect my 4K monitor, but um, I'll teach it about it. So, uh, right, and this is 2160. And now, all right. This is what we'll do. I have the the big the big screen right. Um, this so our canvas matches the screen size, but then we'll scale everything down to full HD using the best best algorithm for that, and we'll frame uh, we'll we'll send thirty frames per second, and that should be it. So this is basically completely configured now. You probably won't ever have to touch that again. Apply. Okay, so now we want to add sources so that we can actually see something. And the best thing to start, I suppose, is the camera. And there it is, this camera. So we'll use the best resolution. 30 frames per second sounds perfectly reasonable. Everything else will just use the defaults. Okay, here's our camera. <laughs> As you can see, um, I own a green screen, therefore I will cut the image down so that it includes only the parts that are covered by the green screen. like this, right? And now we can enable the green screen. There is something called, uh, this is, I have to resize this. So there is an effect filter called chroma key. Green is the color, you could theoretically have other colors also, but green is fine. And now we have um, a picture of our, of, of me <laughs> in here. Um, obviously we would like to see what I'm doing. So um, we can capture a window or we can capture, capture an entire screen. This seems like Capturing the screen is a good idea, I guess. So, okay. And then we put that behind the camera and that's it. Right, your live stream is configured. If you, <coughs> uh, now if you want different layouts for, for different kinds of things that you're doing, you could um, for example, let's duplicate the main view and call it compressed view. And in the compressed view, uh, we'll, this is something I like to do personally. So maybe like, so, okay. And now we can lock it. And now we have two different scenes, two different configurations. Um, personally, I like this one better because you can use this space for, I don't know, to put your, your homepage URL there or your Twitter handle or addif additional information that, that you want on the screen, right? So this seems like a, a pretty good uh, way to, to present your stuff. If you don't have a green screen, then this is clearly the way to go, right? Because uh, you, uh, how would you do this? This is an interesting. So if you don't have a green screen, this means that you, this is disabled, close. And now we would have, right. So obviously your background would show like your room or pictures in the background or whatever you have, right? So in that case, the camera would, uh, 
have to live in the in the background, I suppose. All right, the, this is yeah, it's a <laughs> it's a, not a bad solution actually. So the screen is, I think, kind of more important than than my face. So this is a, still a pretty good solution. Since we do have a green screen, though, let's use it. So now I want the screen behind me. Okay. Um, there is one other thing. If you look at the, the microphone, you notice that it uses only the left channel here um, because a microphone is typically mono. Um, we'll wait a second and resize this. So we'll tell the microphone is mono, the desktop is stereo. Here you can have the del add delays and, and balance and you can configure some, some stuff. But um, there is plenty of material available about OBS in the, in the YouTube space and web and, and whatnot. So I don't think we have to go through everything. Okay, <clears throat> at this point, uh, you're ready to do a complete tricking live stream, right? So. I have a, the second monitor here, which uh, I can open. And now uh, we can do it. <clears throat> there is uh, one thing that's uh, interesting is this uh, studio mode here. Um, basically, this shows you the view that you're going to switch to. And here you can, for example, let's say you want to disable the camera because you want to to be have the entire screen visible, right? And then you can configure that. Meanwhile, people are seeing what's on the right hand side, right? And what you see what you're going to switch to. And then you say, let's transition, bam, and then this is what people are seeing. And this is uh, whatever you You've configured so if you want to add yourself again enable the camera here and then you transition back into it this is a kind of nice i mean if you have uh, sophisticated setups then and, and, and scenes and sources uh, then this is a maybe a nice nice thing to have you can just do it like this obviously right so then it, then the change is made immediately the preview area you can if you don't want it uh, you can switch it off Right, conserves uh, resources on your machine. Um, so this is this is your tool for for live streaming stuff, and this is basically all you need to do to have a very decent, very decent live stream. So we have the software side of things under control. So let's look at what is the the hardware you might want to have. Um, I can show you. This is this is what it looks like here. So no, this is actually not much. No, it's not much better. Who cares? Okay, so you see, I have these uh, two screens, and I recommend um, that you you should have a dual dual monitor setup because it's way more convenient. From I have the 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 monitor in front of me. Is the one that I'm I'm sharing that I'm streaming and the right hand side monitor is uh, not obviously it's not shared so this is where I can put um, OBS or I can put my my chat window there when I stream on, on Twitch um, I don't want to have the chat window in the shared uh, screen because it's just taking up screen space um, that I could use for more important stuff because the viewers have their own chat window they don't need to see mine yeah they know what what's on there so, or maybe you want to do something in the shell that you don't want people to see for some reason. So two monitors are really nice to have. Then um, here is the web camera, microphone, flashlights, a green screen. Um, we'll talk about that in, in more detail in a, in a minute. So for your PC, you, a dual monitor setup would be great. Um, and you should have, um, a graphics card or maybe uh, your integrated graphics chipset can even do it that is able to encode the stream in in real time um, basically a, a pretty cheap graphics card like this one i think it's uh, 150 bucks or so can do it easily 
and your um, your integrated chipset can probably do it too. So you would really like to have the stream encoded by the graphics card because it means that you can put load on your machine, you can run, I don't know, open office and, and a hundred browser windows and whatnot. Um, and it doesn't disturb your, your stream, right? Because uh, if the CPU gets too busy, then you may might have frame drops or something like this. And that's that's not gonna happen if the if you encode it on the, the GPU. Um, then uh, video equipment, there are a couple of things. Let's just check the time. There are a couple of things that are very nice to have. For example, um, you can get um, a web camera. The image quality, I think, is, is pretty good. It can record at 60 frames per second, if I'm not mistaken. So this is the one I have, right? I just put it, uh, you can see it here. If you look at the, the mouse pointer, it's probably not easy to spot, but um, it's on right on top of the monitor. It's uh, very easy. So um, you just, it's a USB camera, you plug it into an USB port and that's it. OBS can, can handle those just fine. This also has microphones, so you can use it as a camera and microphone at the same time. I wouldn't quite recommend it though, because the audio quality is not gonna be really good. Um, another thing that you should definitely look at are uh, spotlights. Um, the thing is that if you have a, a room that's very well lit and you have a cheap camera, it's going to look great, right? It's just because it's lit very well, the camera is going to do a great job. If you have a very expensive camera and you use it in a room that's poorly lit, your image is going to look bad. So instead of spending all your mon money on the best possible camera, rather buy a, a mid-range camera, a cheap web camera, a cheap one, and get uh, flashlights, spotlights, or however you call it. Um, it's important that you buy once, uh, don't, uh, by the way, I'm not specifically recommending those, right? I'm not saying that these happen to be the ones I bought and they are okay. The, the 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 LEDs are pretty good, I have to say, but the mounts they are they are bad. I mean, they are super low quality. They do nothing but stand there, and after six months, um, they they are falling apart. Um, it's really shit. But um, what can you do? So um, what you should look out for is that um, if you have um, if you have this this LED and it does not have this. Uh, fabric, this diffusing fabric here, then this is supposed to uh, light, lighten up your face. And if you watch, if you look into the, the um, LED light like this, it's gonna blind you. You're not gonna see a thing. But if you have um, these puppies, which you put put over the and in front of the light, right? you see the inside is a reflecting material and then there is this uh, fabric uh, thing in front of it to diffuse the light. So this is great, right? You can look, you can have those shine directly at your face and it doesn't disturb you much. You get used to it very quickly. Um, obviously a green screen is nice. Personally, I have these ones, uh, I have one of them. I mean, um, this is a folding green screen. So the, the outside structure is like, flexible and you can fold it into this uh, smaller round circle kind of size and and when you put it out it just pops up and then it's uh you can put it uh, i don't know on a you can put it on some in the background uh, in on a chair or even use a, a, a mount or something so green screens um the main advantage of having a green screen is that it um it saves screen space, right? Because if you look at the, the image of myself now, you see me, but you don't see any of the, the crap I have in the background, right? Uh, most often there is uh, there are, uh, hanging clothes to dry in the background. And while it's kind of interesting for people to, to look at your room, right? And obviously it's, it's nice to see what people have and then the images and the pictures they have on the wall and stuff. Um, still it's wasting screen space. And um, with the green screen, 
you can kind of reduce what you want to show to what you actually want to show and not background noise. So um, last but not least, there is a, a capture card that might be, might be useful. Again, um, I'm not saying that this is a particularly good one. I think it's okay, it's not too expensive and it works, but the image quality is uh, kind of mediocre. So I, I'm not actually recommending this particular card, but the concept having a capture card is actually useful. For example, um, if you have a, a camcorder or a very good uh, digital camera, and you would like to connect that to your live stream, then this is the way to do it. You put an HDMI cable from your camera into this in port, and on the other side, there is an out port, which you can put connect to your monitor so that you can see the image of your camera or whatever on your monitor. But more importantly, here is this USB uh, plug, which you connect to your PC, and then this box will make the input it gets here uh, look like a webcam on that part. So basically your PC will get a, a webcam that you can just easily import into OBS, which shows whatever your external camera is seeing. This is also nice if you want to live stream a gameplay. Suppose you, let's say you have a Linux desktop and you have a Windows laptop and you play on the Windows laptop, you play games, and then you can plug this box between your um, laptop and your, your monitor and at the same time grab the image on the Linux PC and have it have it uh, live streamed via, via OBS. So this is, uh, I, I don't personally, I don't use it often, but every now and then I use it and I'm, it's uh, nice to have. Okay, um, more interestingly or more importantly, um, there is uh, there are very good microphones that you can buy for between 50 and 70 euros or so, I guess. Um, my, my impression is that um, the audio quality is actually way more important than the quality of your camera. So if you live stream your screen, then your, your screen is, is gonna look fine, right? Because OBS has that without any loss of quality. Um, the camera may give you a poor image, but that's actually okay. People don't mind. The microphone though, if that's, sh if that's shitty, then people will hate it. Um, you can't listen if someone's, you, you know it yourself. I mean, if someone uses a very bad microphone with lots of background noise and static and it's clipping and you can listen to that for like 10 minutes, but it's, uh, it's an effort. It doesn't, it's no fun. So if you have a, a budget, then I think it's more important to spend some money on a decent microphone than it is to spend it on, on a good camera or something like this. Okay, so this particular microphone is very good, I think. Um, it's a, a condenser microphone and it has a awesome quality. You can, it's, it's maybe even a bit um, too good for just podcasting. You can, you can do uh, voice artist stuff with this. Um, these condenser microphones, um, they need uh, a, an, extra, an extra power supply. So these have, they don't work without a power supply and they get typically they get the power from a, a preamp or audio interface i call i like the name preamp so you put the plug the microphone in here on the back side i don't know if you can see it no the back side is secret there on the back side is a usb port which you connect to your um, pc and then this whole thing will look like a, a, a sound card and then you have your microphone uh, and you can re record from it just, just perfectly. Also with the preamp, obviously you have this uh, gain, gain button and you can have the left and right uh, channel um, uh, configured separately. If you have two separate microphones that have maybe different sensitivity or so, then you can um, equalize that here. Um, also, here you see is the, the yellow the yellow light says that it's uh, power supply is active. Um, 
there is, uh, if you don't want to invest in, oh, by the way, you don't need two microphones, right? I don't have two. You just, just need one. So one of those parts is going to be unused, but it might be useful in the future maybe to have a second part. So if you don't want to invest into that kind of stuff, then you can also find uh, condenser microphones like, like this one. And this one has um, a space for a battery. So you can put one of those uh, nine nine volt blocks into this this thing and then it works obviously without a power supply and then you can connect it directly to your microphone jack and need no other you don't need any other hardware the, um, also useful and very cheap i mean you probably know this stuff i, I guess uh, so this is a, a nice uh, thing to put in front of your microphone and what it does is that it uh, prevents uh, when I say things like I don't know, Pfote, uh, Pfütze, Pfalz, Rheinland Pfalz. When I say these things, there are certain noises that tend to make like a pop sound in your microphone, and uh, they don't if you put one of those things in, in, in front of it. Um, this now we're getting into the area of luxury items, I guess. Uh, you can put your microphone into this uh, this uh, shock mount and this means that you can when you play grand theft auto and you crash into some light po lightning pole or something like this and then you you hit your desk in anger and then this thing will prevent your microphone from making all kinds of crazy sounds <laughs> so um there is So also these kind of things are nice to mount your microphone on the table. Um, personally, I bought one of those. They are pretty cheap, right? Like 30 euros or even less. I bought one of those and I have to say, don't buy it. They are crap. They are cheap. And what happens is that um, they actually can't, uh, they can't sustain, sustain the microphone, right? They, you, you, you have to, to tighten those screws to an insane amount to keep keep the microphone there where you want it. And if this you can't move this thing without loosening the, the screws first, it kind of defeats the purpose of the whole thing because the idea is that you can move the microphone and shift it left and right easily. So I don't know, there is, uh, there is this one is I think higher quality. I personally, I don't own it. So again, it has good reviews, so maybe this is a decent one. Um, so the reviews suggest it is. Um, so if you would like your microphone to be uh, uh, mobile, then then that's a good thing to have. Obviously, there is way cheaper are just those those mounts where which are stationary. Um, what else is there? Last but not least. Um, again, my disclaimer, I'm not saying that these, uh, that these headsets are particularly good. I think they are fine. I, I have them and they are fine. I think the feature that I want is um, they are wireless and you can use them independently. So you can use only one. And this is, I think, very nice because I could put one of those puppies into my ear and then I can listen to people in the voice chat or maybe music I'm playing on a stream if I do that, even though I actually don't, but whatever, right? So whenever there is audio sounds, um, you absolutely don't want um, any sounds to come out of your monitor because those are going to be or uh, 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 box boxes or something, because those are going to be picked up by your microphone, right? You don't want that. So you absolutely have to use a headset if you have any noises from your machine for whatever reason. And um, the reason why it's nice to have only one in one ear and the other ear open is um, that you can still hear yourself talk. And if you have if you have a big fat headset that has the purpose of like insulating you from the rest of the world, then this is great for listening to music. But if you talk while having that thing on, you won't hear yourself. And um, maybe you don't mind, but I think it's confusing. Um, which is why I, I have these wireless uh, things and uh, I have them 
those specifically because you can use just one of them and the other one can stay in the box. I think it's maybe three or 400 euros that I, I invested and I did this over time, right? I didn't have all this stuff at first. That's uh, you pick up more toys as uh, <laughs> you go on. Um, so let's get into take a look at some some streaming habits. Um, maybe you can benefit from some mistakes that I made over the course of my career. So um, the first thing is uh, to basically I would recommend don't don't try to go for like 4K 60 frames per second resolution this kind of stuff. It's uh, you need specialized hardware if you want to do that and it doesn't pay off. Um, so don't, just don't bother. Go for if you have a full HD stream at 60 frames per second, um, then this is going to be perfect, right? Don't don't bother. Make this in good quality with decent lightning and lighting and and uh, a good microphone, and you'll you'll everybody will be happy. Um, the another important thing is that if you are live streaming like work. Then, like for in a shell, right? Uh, let's look at a man page. So obviously, people have to be able to read this, and um, the the fonts on my screen are huge. They really are. I mean, what I do is I have my my uh, my X X setup is configured for a 4K monitor, and at my at full resolution, those fonts are perfectly readable on my monitor. And for the live stream, I switch down the resolution from 4K to full HD. So the fonts have, I think, at least four times the size on the screen, uh, the, the surface on the screen than they normally would. So for me, this is like crazy huge, but it ensures that people can actually read what you're doing. Um, in fact, um, every now and then I I even go further, right? So I. It depends. It depends on what you're doing, but uh, figure out a way how to make sure that all your fonts are really big. Otherwise, people won't be able won't be able to read them. Um, it's a bit of a no-brainer, but make sure that you don't rec though you don't live stream in a room that has crazy background noise. Um, uh, I already said that I think you should absolutely use headphones. If your computer is making any noise whatsoever, there is like beeping stuff or you have a voice chat with your viewers or you have to have headphones. Um, I think everything else is going to greatly decrease the quality of your stream. This is uh, the next item is actually a very useful tip if you can make it work. Um, the thing when you work on your on the on the machine that you use for live streaming, then obviously it's possible that you do stuff that interferes with your stream. If you put a huge CPU load on it, or if you play a game that uses the graphics card, or you play audio, or you play a video that uses the graphics cards, you don't know, right? There might be stuff that interferes with your stream. And that just doesn't happen if you use a different computer, use a different work remotely on some other machine. I mean, some things, gameplay, obviously this won't work, but if you want to live stream a shell session, then you can log into a remote machine and work from there. Um, if that machine is outside of your network, then that's perfect because if on that remote machine you start downloading a full-blown tumbleweed update, um, then this is gonna your DSL uh, DSL line at home is gonna be packed with that, and that might very well lead to frame drops and poor quality because um, uh, your your stream doesn't have the bandwidth it needs, right? So if you have if you put that load onto a machine that's outside of your network, then nothing can happen and that's just just perfect. Um, if you're working on a remote machine, you might also consider using a separate browser prof profile and um, a separate user. The reason for that is um, basically the auto completion features that we all have these days. So if you look, um, if I type ls here, then I, 
because I want to list the contents of the directory, I immediately expose to the world what kind of uh, music I'm listening to. And I mean, you never know, right? In your shell, you may have for some reason entered a password on a command line or maybe uh, whatever, right? Uh, you may not want to expose your shell history to, to your live stream audience. And in browsers is the same, right? If you type basically any anything, if you go to a browser and you type like an F, then right, you immediately tell people what this is something I have searched for, right? You can tell that you see uh, pages I viewed and um, I use, for example, I use Chromium for live streams, but private. Personally, I use Firefox. So um, this ensures that only things that are relevant for a live stream and that are fit to be seen on a live stream show up um, when I use that browser. Also, there is the history and recommend and whatnot, right? So having um, a separate profile might protect your privacy there. Um, I also, <laughs> also, uh, this is a nice suggestion. <laughs> I found out that you don't have to stay on topic. Um, you, you have some topic for your stream, but you don't have to stick to it. If you feel like talking about anything, anything whatsoever, just go for it. People love it, right? If you if you talk about um, private stuff like what's happening in your life, new new gimmicks you bought, trouble you've had with bureaucracy or whatever, right? Just just chat and. Um, if your audience uh, enjoys it, then they'll respond and you'll have a lively discussion in the chat. And um, it can't hurt really. Show, don't be afraid to show your personality and to show your personal stuff, right? And last but not least, um, it's good to know that if you're streaming on Twitch, um, Twitch does not keep live streams forever. I think they delete live stream recordings after three months. So then your streams are gone after, after a quarter year. So if you have interesting bits in your streams that you would like to keep, then make a clip of that interesting bit. And I believe those clips will be kept forever. Okay, um, interesting suggestions that you might want to look into. I'm not gonna go it in great detail here. Um, it's important that the machine which handles the live stream has uh, has its traffic prioritized. For instance, um, I once had a live stream and it suddenly it broke down the uh, frame, dropped frames like crazy, quality was poor. And that happened because my uh, youngest daughter was watching YouTube, my older daughter was watching YouTube and my wife was downloading some huge data file and our DSL uh, connection was like, Full. <laughs> and <laughs> then my live stream <laughs> didn't couldn't compete with <laughs> these other more important uh, applications. And you, if you have a Fritz box or if you have whatever router you have, you can probably prioritize um, specific kinds of traffic, or you can um, prioritize certain machines over others. That might be good to do. Twitch keeps old streams. I already said that. Um, this is uh, the OBS browser plugin. is a, a very useful plugin for OBS that you can use to um, run. You can visualize all kinds of stuff in your your live stream that is accessible through a web browser. You can put, uh, for instance, this chat box is an application that uses the browser plugin. Um, it basically takes the contents of your chat of your chat and visualizes it for a couple of seconds in your video, which is nice if you want to upload your videos to um, to YouTube. The Nightbot is like a chat bot for Twitch um, that you can configure that certain keywords automatically kick and ban the person who, who use them. There is trolls who come in like, buy subscribers for whatever. And, and once that's happened a couple of times, you can configure this nightbot to um, keep them out of your chat. Um, the video for Linux uh, sync is also an OBS plugin. And what it can do is that it makes your OBS output stream look like a web camera on your local machine. And then you can connect that web camera to your browser 
and have like a video conference over Zoom or anything like that. And what you what people see in that video conference comes from OBS. So you can do all the fancy like having multiple cameras and displaying slides and, and having whatever, a green screen. And so you can freak out people in, in normal web conferences and they, they'll be crazy envious uh, wondering what you're doing. Okay, that's it. End of the presentation. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it and uh, good luck uh, with your, your live streaming career. Bye-bye.